Hello, and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon Framework, Axon Server, and their ecosystem. I am your host and a software developer at Axonic, Sarah Tori. This is the first of a two-episode podcast mini-series with Simon Zambrowski and Jan Gelinski from Holisticon about their experiences of using Axon Framework and Axon Server. They shared what they love about using Axon, but also some of the challenges they faced along the way and some of the solutions that they found for these challenges. I hope you enjoy this episode and let's have a listen. Hi, good morning, Jan and Simon. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing, Jan? Yeah, good morning, Sarah. Um, I'm doing fine um, and really I'm excited about being here and uh, happy to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you joined me this morning. I really appreciate it. How are you doing, Simon? Uh, thank you. Uh, fantastic. Uh, thank Good. you for being here. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. So, um, Simon, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your background? Where are you located? What do you do? Yeah, so I'm. Uh, my name is Simon Zambrowski. I'm um, uh, located in Hamburg in Germany. Um, mm-hmm. uh, actually, I was not born here. I was born in Russia, in St. Petersburg, right. in the end of the 70s. And, um, yeah, I was, you know, doing computer science is a little like a family tradition. So my father was an nice. electric engineer, so he mm-hmm. studied uh, engineering and then it became computer science uh, later on during his career. Oh, nice. um, so I was kind of um, learning it from, from him because he mm-hmm. brought home um, um, an IBM PC AT uh, something in the early 90s. Wow. Because Very he had cool. a small project in, I believe mm-hmm. it was Fox Space. Oh. And I was excited having this mm-hmm. computer at home that was uh, like, uh, you know, I was almost the most coolest guy in the school. <laughs> I bet. Immediately because I had a real computer. It was not, it was not you know, this gaming computer. It was a real mm-hmm. uh, um, IBM PC compatible. Yeah. And of course, I started with gaming. Uh, mm-hmm. it, in those times, that was not not many games out there for IBM mm-hmm. PC, but yeah, still. And then I was catched actually as I was doing some um, some school ex- exercises. We were doing uh, mm-hmm. quadratic equations, and mm-hmm. um, my father told me actually that I could use computer to solve this. Okay. And so I wrote my first program in uh, using uh, Turbo Basic for uh, solving quadratic equations. Nice. And th- from that point on, that started. Uh, I wanted to do everything with it, and uh, yeah, so, so that was my my kind of uh, learning. So I got I got uh, adapted completely to that, uh, and then um, uh, yeah, some sometimes later emigrated mm-hmm. to Germany. Yeah. Uh, so um, um, and we yeah, so built my first computer here uh, on my nice. own, had a small yeah. company that was uh, helping others to build computers. That was, you know, this time of uh, Intel Pentium and everyone wanted and to... And this was during your high school years, right? So you were still in high school, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, I, was, yeah. yeah I was in high school and uh, during cool. that I was, yeah, doing doing some uh, help, uh, yeah, helping other people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in the end of the high school, it was like uh, pretty clear to me what to study, but I, sure. I really dubbed it to to study physics maybe and okay. finally decided no no engineering is my my thing it's it should be engineering <laughs> right. it shouldn't be physics it has uh, to have something to do with computers right <laughs> yeah it, yeah because it was like uh, and uh, yeah so so i i graduated uh, actually computer uh, uh, it, this engineering with computer science as specialization mm-hmm. so it's a german diploma right. in mm-hmm. 2005 Right. And uh, but during my whole study, I was uh, working in uh, in a small consultancy company um, Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, started to uh, develop uh, software for money using Java. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In those times, it was uh, Enterprise Java Beans uh, and Mm -hmm. the full J2E stack. Mm -hmm. And I spent, you you have, you know, this uh, this uh, maximum allowed time from state. Still, it gets illegal if you're studying and doing something else. Right. Uh, because otherwise, otherwise you have to, you know, to to, to get a different uh, healthcare uh, protection. Sure. Uh, yeah. Sure. So, so I, I got this maximum um, what you can actually work. They allowed to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what it yeah. is allowed to do. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Um, very cool. 
Yeah, and so so that was my study. And after that, I stayed in the university. I was uh, doing some lectures, uh, and I was a little bit researching, um, yeah, some kind of an academical uh, subject, so temporal properties mm -hmm. uh, of uh, distributed protocols, uh, yes. especially for service orientation. So SOA, uh, service oriented architecture, was the right. the full blown. Everyone was in it in that time. Yeah, and yeah. So so my real uh, yeah, I had an incredible chance actually to work mm -hmm. with uh, in terms, uh, yeah, in, in kind of an internship in Microsoft Research and Mountain View. Nice. And I worked with uh, Leslie Lampert. And uh, mm -hmm. if you're not aware who that is, so this is the guy who invented most important uh, stuff for distributed computing, actually. Right. Yeah. And um, really cool. yeah, so it was like, yeah, you know, like working with a star and. Uh, yeah. He he showed me a lot of stuff, and I liked uh, these idea of how these uh, research centers are built up and how mm -hmm. this uh, background research is done. This is incredible, cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, so then finally, you came back to yeah. I uh, at some point, that, yeah. I, at some point, you know, it, it was uh, funny because I first uh, uh, learned, uh, yeah, and basically married my wife, and then went to US. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a question if we will move there or go yeah. back. So we decided right, right. to go back and ground a family uh, and uh, get kids and so on. So I returned to Hamburg mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, yeah, then um, uh, yeah, from former times, I knew the, the founder of Holisticon. So uh, mm -hmm. I started there uh, and uh, I was uh, employee number 15. Now we are about 70 people. Wow. That's uh, amazing. So, so <laughs> pretty big growth. Um, yeah. yeah I'm focusing on, um, yeah, so usually... Uh, my my home base is uh, Java backend development. Mm -hmm. uh, as a developer, as a developer lead, or an architect, or uh, whatever role it needs in the project, um, and right. uh, yeah, so uh, that was around ten years ago. I was very deep in this model driven software development, yeah. uh, and all the infrastructure around this. So this language engineering and model mm -hmm. engineering and uh, yeah, model evolutions, model development. Mm -hmm. And uh, did a, little, a lot of projects of that, and yeah. uh, that was my first contact with domain-driven design because you know yeah. designing a language for a particular problem mm -hmm. uh, is is an idea uh, you know to bring computer to the problem and not the problem to the computer. That's exactly right. kind of main idea. And yeah. uh, later on, um, yeah, I was doing a lot and still doing a lot business process management uh, mm -hmm. and business process automation. Right. Which is also about you know building up real business processes in software by mm -hmm. doing models of that mo of that processes as sure. close and understandable for the business that it should be. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still the part uh, part of the business process management team in Holisticon, oh. and we do a lot there in this area. Very yeah. cool. And then you had some experience playing around with Axon a little bit, right? And how long ago was it? And we'll we'll get back to it in more detail, but just to give me a little bit of idea. Yeah, Axon was um, so uh, it was Jan, Jan's fault it, that we <laughs> learned it actually. So gotcha. he, he came across and said, you know, uh, there is this one thing you you have to 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 see it. You have to learn it. It's that cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we share kind of uh, excitement uh, about stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one of the reasons why we're also friends so we we you know if he says it's cool mostly i would say yes you i agree with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he kind of discovered that uh, yeah. he will tell you in detail how that happened and uh, exactly. yeah. i was i was uh, i was uh, fall in love the for, uh, the directly as i as i saw it mm -hmm. and then you know so okay finally this ddd stuff makes more sense right like because you now have a framework where we can play with this, and mm -hmm. it's not no only theoretical construct uh, yeah, construction or whatever. And uh, then I had to learn, of course, more about CQRS and yeah. Axon Framework itself. So it was like mm -hmm. um, on this boundary between the version two and version three. Okay. So the, oh. the version two was already. Uh, I think the version three was already released, but the most mm -hmm. documentation was already <laughs> uh, was still uh, referencing. Still. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It was like, and that helped a lot because we had to, yeah, yeah to deal with it. 
right yeah. and uh, yeah and then we started some open open source stuff with it mm -hmm. and then yeah it started rolling and oh that's fantastic and i can't hear, he wait to hear more about it from from jan and how he discovered it and so forth so uh while we're on the topic jan can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and also where are you i think we're all sort of in the same general area today right yeah as uh, Simon already said, we share a lot of background, so I yeah. try just to fill the gaps. Uh, my name is Jan Galinski. I also work uh, for Holisticon. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm based in Hamburg. I'm here in Hamburg right now. And mm -hmm. uh, unlike Simon, uh, throughout my life, I really never left Hamburg. Might sound yeah. fair to anyone who doesn't know Hamburg. Oh, Hamburg is wonderful. <laughs> Living in Hamburg. <laughs> I don't regret a thing. Um, yeah. I left the continent uh, only once uh, when my mm -hmm. brother married in Mexico. Um, nice. And yeah, otherwise I, I'm happy to stay here and enjoy this beautiful city. This is a really Hedgehog. cool city, I, yeah. I got to say. Yeah, very cool city. Yeah, my, my IT computer background, um, I have to really discuss this with Simon later uh, because he said he had a real PC and, and uh, of course I had a real PC because... <laughs> As for many engineers of my generation, I'm going to have the battle of the PCs the C64, now. Yeah. Commodore C64 was the first and greatest machine ever in, invented. I, I got right. it when I was, I think I was 12. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I even had this uh, data set, data set, I don't know the, the English term. It was this tape recorder, basically, where you had the software stored on, on mm -hmm. music tapes. Uh, yeah. Really, really incredible. Uh, made a great sound. Is it like me. the tape cassettes? Really, like back yeah, in the day. Like, yeah, yeah, like they were uh, like a Walkman, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, and my my birthday is in February, um, and I got a, uh, I didn't get my my computer for uh, for Christmas. I got a book mm -hmm. on computer science for Christmas. Okay. So I spent. Is this I, re I, sure. re I remember that I spent two months writing uh, basic programs with pen and paper, and then trying them That's out amazing. just to discover. Still a problem today that the basic part in this uh, computer science book was not the basic. You mm -hmm. program um, right. C64. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, I really got deep into all this uh, because I wanted to play games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, back, back in those days, uh, games were hard to get. They had nasty copy right. protections and you had to know mm -hmm. a guy who knows a guy. So I, mm -hmm. I really spent a lot of time getting around these uh, restrictions, uh, analyzing and modifying hex dumps to, to achieve some cheating goals. <laughs> the, the, younger, the younger guys, I mean, this is now an old guy telling you from war stories, but back in the day, gaming really... You had to spend some hours to play 10 minutes and then, uh, yeah, you just got bored of it and took the next uh, yeah. thing. Um, exactly. <laughs> they, they were not very elaborate, were they? Yes, yeah, I remember. Yes. And um, yes, yeah, Simon already mentioned it. I, I, of course, I used it to do some homework, but mm -hmm. basically playing playing games and, and getting to know how all this stuff works. Yeah. Main motivation. and Of course. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same as Simon. I, I started uh, studying electrical engineering. I wanted, okay. When I started, I wanted to get in this uh, digital sound processing stuff. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work with uh, sound engineering, sound protection and stuff. But mm -hmm. then I got in contact with the internet, this new thing, the internet, uh, mid yep. And yeah, of course, I wanted to have my own uh, homepage. So I learned uh, Perl and CGI. And cool. uh, yeah, then from there, it was just downhill. So I started working for an online department of a newspaper doing mm -hmm. content management. I had my nice. own one person company developing websites and programming nice. uh, online services. Mm -hmm. And finally dropped all this electrical engineering idea and uh, studied um, computer science. Computer science. Uh, Very cool. But on paper, I'm still as Simon, an electrical engineer. Yeah, yeah. German diploma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is a. Uh, I find it's a uh, actually not that uncommon. I I know a lot of uh, wonderful computer engineers who who got their degree, their paper degree from something else, which is which is neat. And uh, yeah, example of it. My husband has a civil engineering on paper, but he's yeah. a computer engineer. So <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. that's great. Yeah, and, and let's not get into my diploma because mine is not even engineering. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> 
So then what did you do after, after university? And you went to university here in Hamburg as well, right? Yeah, Hamburg, Hamburg, the technical university. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the computer science department really was quite new. So mm -hmm. I think it just opened uh, when I joined them with a professor who came from, from the University of Hamburg and he mm -hmm. brought this uh, another new thing, this hip new thing, uh, Java, uh, to, okay. to Hamburg. Uh, yeah. Because until then we were doing computer science uh, lectures mm -hmm. with C and Lisp and uh, I don't know what, what else. And, and he had wow. Java, so he did uh, lectures and, and, and uh, courses in uh, object-oriented mm -hmm. design, and this is really mm -hmm. the thing uh, where I said, okay, maybe Perl and PHP isn't the end. Um, there's more to, to learn, more to come. So, uh, right. yeah, I got hooked to Java and stuck to it mostly for the last mm -hmm. 20 years. Um, nice. Now, of course, uh, I prefer Kotlin wherever I'm uh, allowed to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because it's yeah not not always possible to use it in customer projects, which I do. Sure, sure. But yeah. yeah. So I'm I, I'm never been one of those who who blame Java for anything, uh, except of mm -hmm. course for the billion dollar mistake. And um, yeah, I think I will continue working for, for JVM at least. Yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, Simon already told you that um, I was uh, guilty of uh, introducing him to Axon. Um, right. A little story, maybe before that, I did regular Java Enterprise uh, three-tier applications a lot. So I had this transactional context, text, and mm -hmm. boundaries and facades. Mm -hmm. And I, I was looking around just to find something new, inspiring, I went mm -hmm. to a meetup in Hamburg, and uh, someone had a had a talk about a software called Lagom. I'm not sure. Okay. I think it's still active. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about four years ago, and Lagom mm -hmm. is a system based on on, on Scala programming la language and all this mm -hmm. Akka um, reactive uh, manifest implementations. And right. they had this concept of CQS ES. And mm -hmm. I said, wow, mm -hmm. this is cool. And uh, But I didn't want to learn Scala just to work on, and learn about CQS ES. So I sure. Googled yeah. uh, Java open source uh, CQS and I found Axon. Yeah. And uh, I think I played around it for, for three or four days. And then I used mm -hmm. an open space slot uh, in our company on a Friday afternoon and, and showed uh, Simon and a few other colleagues uh, what jewel I discovered, and <laughs> nice. I think uh, from from there on we yeah we always did something with with Axon. If not for a customer, then in our spare time or in our uh, eighty twenty, hopefully mm -hmm. on internal work. Yeah, and that's a that's a really cool concept that um, I think we will talk a little bit uh, about later. To that, your company at Holistic, and you have this eighty twenty percent time that you really spend on, um, you know, eighty percent of course on the projects and clients and so forth, and then the the twenty percent that you really spend on uh, cool findings or experiments and things like that. I think yeah, exactly. I find that really really cool. So that's that's really uh, interesting, and we'll come back to that uh, and talk a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, since we're on the topic, uh, let's let's talk about um, Axon Framework. Um, what were the uh, the most important ideas of Axon Framework that got you really excited and interested about using it? Yeah, let me uh, answer this question. So I Go think for it. I think um, um, so. The key feature, I think, it's also the U, the USP uh, of of the framework. So I haven't seen it anywhere else is this idea mm -hmm. of three types of explicit messages, having commands, right. events, and queries. Mm -hmm. And then these messages are sent over buses. So right. just recently read a white paper from a big manufacturer of a messaging system, and they were all only about events. But this, yeah. this difference in semantics of events and commands and queries, I think this is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And it makes the resulting architecture very, very clear. Yeah. And I think the second feature, uh, what I liked from the beginning on, actually, mm -hmm. was uh, this idea of separation of um, 
yeah, business logic and infrastructure configuration. Right, right. Um, you have it at least uh, a little bit in uh, frameworks like Spring, but I think mm -hmm. Axon goes much more beyond of that. Yeah. Because you can exchange configuration after the system is built and then mm -hmm. use it in a different context or deploy parts differently. So this is very, very, very powerful. That's really cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's good. And then uh, why, why did you think that this was important? This was an important, this, these two features were important to use. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we did um, um, we did a um, um, user group in the start of this year um, right. where we were uh, focusing on DDD, SQRS, and Axon Framework in mm -hmm. particular. Uh, so it was a pretty interesting, um, uh, pretty interesting uh, talk that uh, Jan mm -hmm. and me were um, holding in Hamburg. But yeah. the more interesting for us wa was actually the preparation for it because uh, right. we were there like, or we went there uh, during last years. And then you had, you know, like uh, you have like two hours talk where you have to mm -hmm. pull everything in inside uh, theory and demo session and so on. So it was a pretty, pretty tough schedule. Yeah. But during <laughs> this preparation, intense. yeah, we kind mm -hmm. of discovered that uh, the the most confusion in this area of DDD, CQRS, event streaming, event sourcing, is that you have the same terms using in this in this uh, particular domains, right. and they are used kind of interchangeable without exact definition and ex mm -hmm. and without actually a reference to this other domain. So it, this is right. kind of you know known from. Uh, from uh, from theoretical sciences, why you know where you where just establish a theory and you start from zero and uh, just don't interfere with anyone else. So if right. you like the theory, you are you are you are inside of it. But if you mm -hmm. are looking you know around and you you looking for several theories, then you see okay they are using the same words but they mean completely different stuff. Exactly. So like to give you an example this this wonderful word event which is used in actually every context uh, yeah. and if you look on event and event streaming that is just mm -hmm. a message published over a topic a queue or and if if you look on CQRS event is is a mean to synchronize the read and the write model right. and it, there can be a particular specific implementation where you say okay I distribute my read, uh, my command model, and my my query model, and uh, I use messaging for communication of this change from one side to another. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, if you have the event stream, this meaning of the word event will match. Right. But it's only a specific implementation detail where mm -hmm. it matches, but yeah. it's not about the core properties of that. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what what confuses people a lot because they they hear a word and say ah okay I know this from that context it's, it it should be the same then but yeah. it, it is not and so but one not. it was like you know a big part of our of our talk was to uh, to say okay let 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 get this stuff uh, clear mm -hmm. where it comes from and what does yeah. it mean from uh, domain driven design what does it mean from cqrs and what does it mean from event sourcing mm -hmm. and what is it uh, it's not interchangeable it shouldn't it it must not be done together you mm -hmm. can pick mm -hmm. parts what to do and what not to do right and probably we, we should speak about this a little bit later about these architectural choices that you need yes. to, to meet actually Absolutely. Um, yeah. and i think axon framework does it a lot better by by clarifying what it is so yeah. it's kind of re, it's kind of refining it it says you know we you have this concept of message so message is, a, mm -hmm. is an important concept mm -hmm. and you have explicit messaging which makes it uh, more clear for the architecture how how it behaves nice. but then it goes further and say uh, not all messages are equal there are mm -hmm. three types major types of messages you are sending Right. which have specific semantics and specific uh, way they behave in the distributed scenario. Exactly. Right. And um, yeah, so so this is this is very important. This this mental model that is built then uh, mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. have you have the buses, and yeah. you have the messages flow uh, f yeah flowing or transported by the buses, mm -hmm. and then between the buses there can be only certain kind of components. So right, this right. is also defined because Axon provides us a way how these messages are connected mm -hmm. to our business service, uh, to our yeah. business uh, logic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the aggregate, uh, which is, it's not, it's not just a concept. You have right. clear construction principle how to build it. 
Exactly. Uh, you have a yep. saga, you have a projection, you know, mm -hmm. and then it it kind of uh, clarifies how this uh, this um, uh, yeah this struct to, to structure your application. Mm -hmm, exactly. And you did talk about the mental model that Axon Framework provides uh, for, for you to use. And um, then you brought in the examples of aggregate and Saga and, uh, Saga and projections and so forth. Do you have an example that you had to actually uh, sit down with Jan and sort of like uh, bring in the ideas together and see, okay, where can we implement this? Um, yeah, we had, uh, so we had, we had different tries actually on that mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um, i'm sure yeah so so we we of course we started with uh, wonderful videos from alert and uh, we started them and we saw the bank and we said i would like to get the bank running for our own but yeah. at some point you know we we have no ideas about banks so we are mm -hmm. not in financial business um sure. uh, we both had projects in banks but uh, this is not uh, something you want to build in your uh, free mm -hmm. time for fun uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, it's not for fun exactly so what we uh, um, but we had this idea so we are you know holisticon is a soccer company uh table soccer excuse me not yeah. soccer <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> almost the same but yeah <laughs> so we have this table soccer <laughs> in the company and we have some players who play pretty pretty well uh pretty competitive and um and of course, you know, the idea was born by one of the customers I was at, and they yeah. had, you know, this uh, possibility to to uh, to store the scores of the games, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so that was the initial idea, and I, that was like ten years ago. So I said, yeah. let us let us build something like this. Let us build a system where you can track uh, your results. Mm -hmm. And so we we had several iteration of uh, building uh, building the application. So we started. We are backend developers. We started with the backend. Mm -hmm. um and uh, yeah that was our playground so that we basically now it's it's uh, getting um it's it will be released to the public it will get a real app you will get uh, yeah. it, uh, from a app store and uh, it has a backend written in axon framework and uses Axon server. So yeah, that's yeah, I'm really excited to to see that when it comes out. It's it's a really cool project because we usually, as you mentioned, it's about banks and finances and accounting and things like that. So seeing something outside of it just for fun is is really exciting and interesting. So let's go back to more, um, I guess, theoretical parts. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about the challenges that you faced in CQRS and event sourcing? What were some of those challenges that you were trying to to solve? Yeah, let me let me add in the theoretical part is <clears throat> was my keyword. Um, yeah, I consider, uh, of course, we are both engineers, but I can consider my myself more to be the the practitioner, and uh, so everything I know about theory I learned from from Simon, and I show, nice. therefore I show him uh, how how things work, or, or what new uh, cool uh, frameworks are out there. Um, challenges uh, that. I personally see that this CQS is a concept without this event sourcing aspect. Uh, right. Everyone uses who, who doesn't do a monolithic system because it's natural that you have one system that stores data and provides uh, a read model and right. other systems using an API, mostly REST, uh, if you do it uh, mm -hmm. in a simple fashion. And so you already have CQS. You have a, <coughs> a separation of your read and, and write model and write models, yeah. And your clients. So mm -hmm. uh, this is the first thing that that I always have to discuss. If you, if you go into the project and you say let's let's do CQS, or someone tells you should we do it, then you t mm -hmm. can tell them you're already doing it. Yeah. But you're doing it implicitly. So you're just mm -hmm. building something that behaves like a CQS uh, system. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, then the, the concept is, uh, <clears throat> I think it's it's hard to get if you come from 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 a classical JE layered application mm -hmm. approach. Right. Because especially transactional behavior is completely different with all this eventually uh, consistency and, and stuff. And, um, but still, as Simon already mentioned, uh, there's so many overlaps between terms that we use, like right. event, message, command, uh, is mm -hmm. it already CQS, is it not CQS, that in, in, in projects I do, I have a lot of confusion, this is really dangerous, 
that right. if you ask someone, do you know everything about it that you need to know or should we mm -hmm. have another session? No one will say, I didn't get it. They, they would yeah. say, of course <laughs> I got it. And then, so this is, is, is a bit too too fishy, too, too fuzzy when it comes to the real application. Sure. And that's why, uh, like like Simon, uh, um, I, I love uh, how Axon really addresses these things by, mm -hmm. by putting mm -hmm. just you put boxes on the table, and this belongs here, this belongs here, this belongs here. It, yeah. it forces your 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 brain to to think applications in mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. and in a practical manner, exactly, practical as opposed manner. to just being about all theoretical. Okay, this is yeah. command, this is query, this is blah blah blah. You do have to follow certain. Um, rules and regulations on it. It yeah. gives you some freedom, but it also gives you those boxes yeah. where you can. And this is where, 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 where Simon in. really helped helped me. Uh, actually, he did this theoretical uh, uh, preparation right. for a talk in, in January, and yeah, yeah this is an, was an eye opener. Maybe mm -hmm. it's out there. Don't want to advertise it, uh, but um, I think it's a really really good summary of of DDD CQS and CQS ES and. Uh, Yeah, defining those those terms. So, mm -hmm. um, and once you got that, that's okay. But there, I think it's too few books out there. And uh, I think Alad will listen to this. He promised n never to write a book, but maybe, <laughs> maybe we have that joke. <laughs> maybe someday maybe, he writes maybe, a book about it. <laughs> yeah, so eventually uh, he will write a book. Yeah. He will write a book about it. So, can you tell me a little bit about distribution? So, what 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 about distributions? In in Axon framework or in yeah, it's, you know, generally, I mean, Axon framework is is not not just greenfield or theoretical. I mean, Axon framework matches how distributed systems or distributed mm -hmm. um, um, application roles or aspects uh, are built. So um, yeah, yeah, we 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 summed it up to to uh, five types of messages that mm -hmm. uh, Axon separates mm -hmm. um, that maybe are addressed as event in, in other publications or, or tools, mm -hmm. uh, but have re uh, clear semantics and um, distribution aspects. So the first is uh, the command, the C in CQS. Um, mm -hmm. I want to change the state uh, of a write model. Mm -hmm. It's a directed me message. So I send it ex exactly to one aggregate entity, mm -hmm. whatever, and say, you, I want your state to change. Um, then, of course, I get uh, some response back mm -hmm. from right. uh, from the aggregate, uh, if it was successful or not, at least, um, which is uh, also directed. It's not sent to, to anyone else. It's just sent mm -hmm. to the um, system that uh, published the command. Mm -hmm. So here we have one-to-one -one directed messaging in our right. distributed system. Mm -hmm. um, then the... The aggregate um, emits or publishes an, an event, so the domain event, what changed. Yeah, here was mm -hmm. the change command, this changed, and yeah. the broadcast. So anyone within my context, of course, or my, my uh, server, so anyone connected um, can um, decide to, to react on this or right. also can decide to ignore it, which is right. a completely different kind of messaging because uh, mm -hmm. you're just shouting out of the window and, and see what happens. And yeah. um, then the queue in, in CQRS uh, are the queries. And the mm -hmm. queries, uh, yeah, quite in, in theory there, I am asking you. So I, I have a directed um, call to a system. This is when mm -hmm. I do a REST request. But um, when multiple systems are connected in a distributed world, um, this is a uni unicast. So um, I want someone to to uh, answer my question, but sure. I don't have to know who. This is mm -hmm. location mm -hmm. parent. Right. And of course, the, the response itself is only sent to me again, which is directed. So we have right. uh, for this um, five uh, types of, of mm -hmm. messages. We have mm -hmm. uh, three, um, yeah, message distribution buses modes, and buses, yeah. modes, yeah. Uh, direct mm -hmm. broadcast, mm -hmm. recast. And Very cool. 
So then um, just uh, just so that I can uh, also um, be very clear on this. So the, the three types that we have, the, the CQRS uh, we're talking about, or uh, in, in, in our case with, with Axon Frameworks, so the five types of messages, two of them basically uh, coming from the, uh, the command side, where one of them is reflecting the intent of the change, the other one's reflecting whether or not it was successful. And then we go to the the event to sync the command and the query models basically together. And then the the two last ones are the query side where one of them uh, is reflecting the request of the data and the other one is the query response to transport the data results um, uh, and, and, and it's directed. So we have basically uh, the way that you that you've described it is is really clear and um I, I'll take note and I'll, I'll put them in the, the written note of the of the podcast so that uh, everybody can really benefit from it because I think this is a really uh, nice way of uh, uh, really uh, defining those um, uh, those modes of distribution, whether or not it's, it's direct or broadcast or unicast and uh, and so forth. Um, so with with um, with Axon Framework infrastructure, it, it does provide uh, the, the the users with this uh, function to connect these messages with the business logic. Can we talk about that a little bit as well? So the the idea is that we there is a very nice way how you um, you can actually program your business logic mm -hmm. logic, and you don't have to to deal with you know pure messaging concepts in terms of sure. Uh, so Axon Framework is responsible for uh, basically getting the parameters of our methods mm -hmm. or our functions that are inside mm -hmm. of our business logic. Right. Uh, we just mark some of them with annotations and then mm -hmm. Accent Frameworks will pick these messages up and will serialize them and will uh, basically send them over the wire and will dispatch them to the correct place and right. will uh, deserialize them and uh, yeah, basically get to the, uh, to the target. And mm -hmm. it will also do with the response. So this is this is very very powerful. So we don't have to deal with all this messaging stuff yeah. at first place, but we can tune yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what we are talking about by the separation of of uh, implementing business logic from uh, from all this operational stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, and there is a lot of it, right? So you can yeah, right. you can think about the distribution. You can uh, this distribution is uh, uh, can lead you to different scaling strategies mm -hmm. of several components. You can define how the serialization is done, um, right. and then you can basically think about all this non-functional stuff like uh, how efficient is my application, what is the throughput mm -hmm. of it, what is the responsiveness, and everything else. And yeah. th I think this is a very very strong idea that you you have your business problem. And you have people programming or being good in programming uh, the business stuff, right? And then you have other people which are usually more a little bit more technically and mm -hmm. a little bit more in technology and all this mm -hmm. configuration, and they can focus on configuration of the infrastructural stuff. Exactly. And, and the marriage of the two is is something that's really difficult in in many cases because yes. you have the business side where they understand the business logic and what you're trying to achieve from this uh, this this problem that you're trying to solve within the business, uh, and then you have the technical team who has to basically deliver the results, and communication between the two uh, can be sometimes hairy and a little bit difficult. So this is uh, I, I like how you put it. It's a really good way of meeting those two in the, in the middle and sort of communicating between the two, which is nice. Um, so let's talk about Axon Framework and distributed scenarios. Can we, can we talk a little bit about that? Uh, are you using it in distributed scenarios? Um, yes, we are. As, as, uh, probably Jan told us, the, so we are doing, mo most projects we are doing is, is kind of this enterprise scale project. So we're not... Mm -hmm. For our customers, we're not doing small projects at all. <laughs> yeah. um, even if it starts small, at some point, you know, you have the follow up and the follow up and the follow up, and uh, of course. and sometimes you just uh, get booked for a project. So currently, uh, both of us are in a 100 people uh, project. Like uh, so, That's pretty, a lot. <laughs> pretty pretty yeah. large organizational structures. Yeah. And of course, um, yeah, they're doing it agile, which means, uh, yeah, you have something like about 15 teams working on a single solution in the end. Wow. And of course, it's not a monolith. 
because mm -hmm. uh, we are in 2020, so um, uh, distribution by default, yep. which is of course uh, slightly a problem. But uh, still, you have you know you have these different components for um, distributed over the network, and uh, they have different roles and different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not only developing it, but both of us are doing it in terms of DevOps. So if you run it, you uh, if you build it, you run it, right? So this mm -hmm. is, uh, right. It sounds a little bit scary uh, being an external consultant, but still it works. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, the the idea is not to you know uh, to wake up at night and fix something, but the idea is to build it so resilient that it heals itself at night, and you can wait until. Uh, the next morning and the this it's not it's not going to to to, to be much smoke at night this is the, the, right. the important issue <laughs> exactly yeah, you don't want so, it to explode right <laughs> you know, yeah exactly and so so you can imagine in the, in such projects you have all the time this uh, there is no you know uh, pure ideal design with clear mm -hmm. uh, requirement and so on so it's always yeah. finding a compromise between functional non-functional stuff Mm -hmm. and um and running against the time uh, as usual so uh, large projects are uh, yeah as they are yeah yeah and, that's exactly true yeah yeah so, so yes we are using it in distributed scenarios and mm -hmm. uh, yeah we have to yeah and, of course um, yet actually we can uh, maybe speak about that a little bit later that we we had some observations how Axon framework does in distributed scenarios mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that was not just the theoretical stuff right. like uh, you have these buses and you can separate there, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, basically we have some, some observations which are more practical mm -hmm. nature. Yes, and I'm sure we'll come back to those next time. We will talk further about distribution scenarios. We will also cover operation modes and uh, deployment examples. Please join me next time as I continue my discussion with Jan and Simon. Until then, have a great time and happy coding.